do you think you guys have more fun than other people on these races? Oh, yeah. I mean... Without naming names. <laughs> well, I was going to say not to throw Payson under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> or RVs. Bus or RVs. Or not RVs. to throw Payson under the RV. It's a pretty low bar to, to have more fun than, like, some of these bike racers. <laughs> First, I wasn't gonna do Unbound. Last year, it was scary as hell. There was like 2,000 people going down a very narrow road and uh, didn't really know what I was getting into. Rain and maybe lightning, which I'm terrified of. I hate lightning. This race last year was my first real mass start and my first long, long distance. I had a tough time, I had a lot of flats and six holes in my tires, which was a lot of holes, but then ended up being able to finish, just kind of cruised along and, and got it done. And it was like, a, it was honestly one of my best days on the bike, mentally. I met a lot of unique people. We rode together and I finished before the dark and that was great because I was scared of being out there in the dark. Coming into this year, I definitely feel a lot more prepared, mostly just mentally, like, okay, I've done it. I finished nonetheless. Made it. This is just like I remembered. This year, Sarah and I were like, we have our shit dialed. Two weeks ago, Sarah and I both got our nutrition all laid out, all in baggies, all labeled, which is really impressive for Sarah. <laughs> no offense, Sarah. It's such an unpredictable race. Like, anything can happen. You can be the strongest one or one of the strongest ones, but you also have to have a lot of luck, too. You have luck. I think over the last year or so, going from being a newbie to um, where I am now, I guess. I don't know where that is. Last year, this time, sh her goal was to finish. And, you know, I've been trying to, like, Ellen, you could race this. Like, you can be competitive. Like, you could get a top 10 you deserve to be in this pack of women. We met <laughs> when you were 12. I coached, and Ellen was one of the little shredded girls on the team. And then as, you know, my career did its thing, I was like, man, I'd love to like bring on a teammate there's no way I would have made it this far if I didn't have the support system I have, so just trying to like recreate that for people. Ellen, her first gravel race was this race in Montana. She got second on her mountain bike, and I was like, all right, Ellen's on the team. <laughs> I think Sarah does a lot for me, and then I do a lot for her. You know, she puts together our schedule. I'm really bad at that stuff, and she knows that about me, and we, like, sort of help each other. I do feel sometimes a little bit in her shadow. Sarah's like, let's do X, Y, Z at this race, or I need to be at whatever at this time, and I just kind of follow along like a little puppy dog. Sometimes that doesn't feel great. I don't know if she knows, like, how good she's doing. Like, she really stepped up her training this year, and she's, like, committed. I do know that people value me for who I am as a racer. Um, has, you know, like, without Sarah. It's definitely something I'm navigating. my third week out of the whole month. <laughs> I remember the first day I got into town, I went for a ride and just like, just gravel everywhere. Like, I don't think I saw a single car. Um, it was just quiet and peaceful. And I just felt this like sense of reprieve being here. Why'd you decide to come here a month early? Cause I want to win Unbound. <laughs> I uprooted my life for this month mostly because like this course and race is different than a lot of other races. It's just 
very long, first of all, but the gravel is sharp and you have all this techie sidewall flats and the wind and the heat and just the exposure, like there is no tree coverage out there and I don't think people realize and so I decided if this was a priority for me then I'd come here this whole month and do most of my training out on the roads. Uh, of course this year goes south again um, and so this is historically interesting because some of these roads can get pretty muddy. This is a whole different ball game here. I see riders almost sliding all over the place. So there's an MMR um, pretty early, um, like a minimal maintenance road um, right after D Hill around mile 10 or 11. It's like a three, four mile stretch of road that could get pretty greasy if it's wet. I mean, I'm pretty motivated to show that Big Sugar was not a one-off. I, I don't know if I'm viewed as a contender, but I feel just as good as I did going into Unbound as when I did into Big Sugar. But this year, I'm smarter. I'm just excited to hopefully have an opportunity to show that. So much of my energy and thought has been into winning and thinking I'm going to win and visualizing it. Sophia is gonna be obviously strong. She won last year. I'd like to beat her. I'd also, Lauren has won this event before, so I'd like to beat her. If you want to win, you want to beat everyone. Welcome to the podcast. You're going to love talking about Unbound Gravel. What are you most looking forward to as we head back to Emporia? Uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm really looking forward to prepping for that. Like those roads are miserable. In the Vorbereitung auf Unbound. As we head into Unbound. 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 Hell yeah. Push yourself physically and mentally out there is, is what I'm after. I'm ready to push it to the limits. Second stop of the Grand Prix, man, we're fired up to get this one going. This might be the biggest one, the one that everybody wants the most. Everyone's maybe a bit apprehensive about the weather, but can't always be what you want it to be. I think Unbound is the premier gravel race in the world. That's good, huh? Luscious. You just look at the people who come to the race and fast people go where the other fast people are because fast people want to beat other fast people. <laughs> I've never seen so much gravel in my life. It's unreal. When I envision winning Unbound, I, I get goosebumps. Unbound was kind of the first gravel race in the scene. It has this like fabled history and lore around it. It's hard as hell. We hear it called a little bit of everything, right? The unofficial World Series, the unofficial Super Bowl. and I'm looking to have a fun time, smooth ride, and hopefully be up towards the front. You know, there's so much energy behind gravel racing. That's right, I, I turned 37 yesterday. I'm getting old, you know? I'm still kicking around. <laughs> there's less of a barrier between the participants and the, the, the pro racers, right? Tell them that Willie signed in, that's the dog. Everyone loves my dog more than me. The first year I did Unbound, I think the expo was like one block. And now it's half of downtown, it feels like. It's crazy. In every race, there's a dropout moment. I mean, every single race where you're like, Ugh, I can't keep going. What gets you through those very challenging moments out there? Oh, God, okay. Right, here you go. Here you <laughs> go. go. No, you go. Well, you've raced this a lot more than I have, so I only have one year of experience with that. But my I'm going to drop out moment came like an hour after the start. You know, you go through all the excuses and you're like, well, I'll just keep riding and see. And you just kind of keep battling. <laughs> I know that's like not very like, you know, it's not a glorious answer, but it's kind of like all you have to do out there. I'm curious what Lauren had to say. <laughs> Okay, my answer might be a little bit uh, darker. <laughs> we're gonna get dark right now because we're all gonna go to some dark places tomorrow. <laughs> I see a huge difference between pain and suffering. I never consider myself suffering on the bike. It is a temporary experience of pain 
I'm gonna be okay, it's gonna be over, there is like an end in sight. Some people like to think that I've lost my pain receptors, it's a rumor going around the Peloton. <laughs> That's helpful here at Unbound. I am Lauren DiCrescenzo, also known as LDC around these parts. So when you won in 2021, where did you make your move? Where did it all happen? Your Unbound 200 winner, Lauren DiCrescenzo, takes the win for 2021. That was the biggest win of my career, and it was really cool. And I came back last year, got second place. The field keeps getting deeper and deeper every year, and it's getting faster and faster. Sorry, I'm like, that's okay. It's a long day. I'm here for my sweet, sweet redemption. <laughs> Thank you so much, you all, for making the time. Because this means a lot, sharing yourself and your stories. And best of luck out there tomorrow. As the sport of gravel racing grows, this is not a grassroots thing anymore. This is a professional sport. These are career-defining moments. In theory, I should be in class right now, back in California, so I have to go back and take a test online right now and then carry on with all of this bike madness. This will be my longest race by far. So, a lot of mechanicals, a lot of weather, probably some pushing my bike through mud. Mm, super long day, but I don't know, we'll see. You get to the finish line hopefully one way or another. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've been making some friends and I think it's good to have the same familiar faces at each start line. <laughs> These races are just about sharing the experience because all of us could go ride 200 miles by ourselves or we could do it together and suffer together and that's so much more powerful. as part of my life, but have never really fully embraced it. And then finally, once COVID hit, I just started biking more and more, and that's when it finally stuck. So I started racing my bike about two years ago now. Yeah, I'm being patient. No, I'm interested. <laughs> I think like my plan is for sure to just sit Find in the mark. and, yeah. Yeah. I think a series brings the best riders together because I go to races that are outside of the Grand Prix, and there's five really, really strong girls, but there's not a depth of field. And you go to a Lifetime Grand Prix event, and there's the 40 best women out there. No, and then turn off. Don't run the Stop! Oh, no. Oh, he's huge. He's so big. Oh, oh he's so big. Oh, he's so cute. I mean, it uplifts women in sports completely. And for girls outside of the Grand Prix to see that, I hope they're like, I want to be like that. Make sure you put him in the direction he was yeah. going. We're all gonna oh, see. <laughs> oh, oh, poor buddy. Don't touch your eyes. Oh. Here, so let's squirt your hands with some water. Yeah, right? totally good. Oh my God, I feel like your I mom like right so now. Brutal. I know. I know. I think most of us that ride our bikes just love being outside. When you're on the bike, everything else just kind of like melts away in a way. So then when you're riding with someone that are also experiencing who they are in their life and you share that together, it's just nice. Like for example, Danny and I. Danny is from the UK, has no like connections or friends necessarily here. When I arrived in Kansas, I was like, uh, where do I even start with group rides? And I just messaged Paige like, Hey, I've got two and a half hours. Don't suppose you're riding today. And she was like, yeah, I've got two and a half hours. And then, boom, that was it. She was just super helpful and gave me some insights, like where attacks were going, where to chill and things like that. Yeah, she's a competitor. Do I want to beat her on race day? Does she want to beat me on race day? Hell yeah. But at the same time, we have parallels because <laughs> I entered this scene and it's cutthroat at the top. Oh. Sometimes the women are not super friendly, oh. right? And so we just kind of had this bond. If everything stays dry, I think it's going to be more about the wind um, and positioning there. 
but yeah, if it's wet, then you know some of those sections will get a little, a little split up. I think. Everyone yeah. does race hard, but then after it, everyone celebrates whatever result you've done. Oh wait! Oh no. That culture is unique. Yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to bring up our race director, Ben Sachs. Let's hear it for this guy. Thank you, Christy. I should say, yeah, I'm Ben Sachs. Uh, this is my third year uh, as the race director for Unbound Gravel. Tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be lining up starting at about 5 a.m. There's one spot in particular that could be muddy. Like, it's a little muddy. I love that. Like, a little muddy is great. Um, you know, this is just a, a little bit of extra challenge. Unbound Gravel rotates routes every two years to spread economic impact and show the vastness of the Flint Hills. Um, this year we're going south again, and last year's route was really fast. I think we're 44 miles in. Pretty big group. They really ramped up the pace. Those groups stayed big for a really long time, so this year Ben Sachs and team have done a great job of spicing things up. Pretty early on, we could see the race shake up a little bit. Mile 10, it's gonna be a game changer. Hey Ramona, how muddy is it? It's enough to break up the pack. Uh, the last time we used that section was 2015 and it was like a complete slog. I wasn't here in 2015, but everyone talks about that as just this unbelievably legendary year. Um, there was actually, the story goes that there was a guy leading, huge lead, and he was having such a miserable time that he quit while leading. And the person that ended up winning just dealt with the mud better, you know, psychologically. A 200 mile gravel race is never gonna be easy, and, and this course is 95% you know gravel unpaved roads with like double track minimum maintenance roads you know I don't want to be mean but you know I also I, I want to see people not be able to finish it it's supposed to be a challenge uh, so um, yeah it's looking a little gloomy I think it's gonna be muddy my performance at Unbound last year was interesting. <laughs> I guess I wasn't expecting it to be so congested at the start with the guys and the amateurs. All of us were just fighting for position, not going super hard, and there was, wasn't like a big climb to really spread out early on, so we were all just together for a really long time, and uh, the gravel road was kicking up rocks, and it was just, it was pretty intense. You had to keep fighting to stay in position, and I kind of got pushed out to the outside and I got stuck in a rut. And I tried to get out of the rut, and while doing that, I think I took out the rider behind me. Oh, you see a crash right in the back there. That's right, the front is the safest place to be. We fell, and like half the field rode over me. And by the time I got up and fixed my bars, uh, the whole field was gone. I'm so grateful that well, there were some changes made to Unbound this year. Women are getting our own start, and I think that's going to make a huge difference, especially for me who crashed because we were in a combined start with the men. It's going through your head. Uh, don't punch it, don't rain, don't thunderstorm. <laughs> the rest of it I could do. <laughs> That's just yeah, the bit I'm most worried about. But I mean, the storms last night was crazy. Yeah, just tell me how you're feeling. Feeling good. Uh, it's race day, like 25 minutes from the start. So at this point, and all the haze in the barn, just gotta trust everything's done leading up to this. So yeah, feeling pretty good. A little nervous, which is good and normal. So yeah, ready to roll. The first 20 miles. It's absolute bedlam. I'm here with Sarah Sturm before the unbound gravel 200 miles. <laughs> Last year I was freaking out by racing 200 miles, and today I'm like, oh, that's the distance is not even a problem today. 
We are live here tonight. I'm Bill Ellison. I'm joined by Leah Davison. We're going to be calling the action all day long. Our professional men and women and at the start. Did anyone see the people back home? It's the people back home. You pray for me. In years past, it's not a women's race. It's like a race of who can be with the fastest group of men. And I think this year is really exciting. We're going to see how the women tackle 200 miles like on our own. This is the first year that we've actually started the women separate, right? A whole new dynamic. How do you think that's going to play as we talk about the women's field? They were pinning it. I love to see it. It's aggressive racing in a 200 mile race from the gun. You can see in the live coverage, it is strung out, which means they're going fast. Oh, I think they've already caught an elite man. You see these comments? The men will have to pull over and let the ladies Hell pass. Yeah. <laughs> can we like him? Can we like him? <laughs> this is what we're hoping for. It's going to be a good race. Oh no. Oh no, here they go. They hit the muddy it's spot. Right. It's not supposed to. <gasps> uh. Look at the mud. A lot of mud. We're having a lot of problems right around that mile 11 mark. Slippery mud that sticks to your bike and your wheels can't turn. A lot of those riders having a struggle in that first real obstacle, getting into the grass, trying to get around the mud, avoiding all the clumping, broken derailers, all kinds of mechanical mishaps going on. Oh, am I going to regret this? What do you think? Can I ride this? Hey, Ellie, you can ride the left side. Go on the left. When that lead pack hit that mud section, it just blew apart. Oh, no, oh that's, that's, that's a woman. Yeah. Derailer, yeah. chain fell off <laughs> in the first 10 miles of the race. Also, like, don't forget, a thousand amateurs have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go for it. Hey, we are out here at the Bazaar Cattle Pens, mile 24, and we're waiting for the men's and women's fields to arrive. In these races, we're all so focused, and you just kind of assume the weather knows that it's unbound, <laughs> but the weather doesn't give a shit. <laughs> The current situation, Anna Reinhardt, one of the dark horse riders, is our early leader. Is that the first one? Yes! Yes, yes Jenna. Jenna! Oh my God, Jenna. This is her first unbound. Mountain bikers. Always. <laughs> Always. Do we, do, do we need to see this? We were getting word that the defending champion here and the overall current series leader, Sofia Gomez Villafane, hanging on to second place at the moment. Yeah, Sofia. Let's go. It's a minute 30. Yeah, Ruth. Sarah Sturm, of course, in the top five, always a crowd favorite and always a threat to be on the podium. Ellen Campbell, they are together right now on the course. Ellen. Yeah, yeah, Ellen, yeah, Sturmy. They're sitting in fourth and fifth. Wow, Ellen and Sturmy are together. I've been thinking about how I got to the point I am in this sport. It's been kind of a journey. There's a lot of pieces that you learn and then you realize that's not for me. I never want her to feel in my shadow at all, but I think she is so her own person and I really admire that she is who she is. Like she isn't trying to morph into something she's not. It just like took a little bit to like figure out who I am as a racer and like what it means to me and how I want to approach it. It's cool to see her come into some confidence and grow a lot as an athlete. 
I think having a friend that's also a professional athlete, that's also a competitor, that also is somewhat of a mentor, there is a level of maturity required. So then some little updates here from our elite women's 200 mile event. Wow. Jenna Reinhardt, our early leader, she has been caught and passed. Our defending champion, Sofia Gomez Villafane, now in the lead, just a little over two and a half hours. We're a community and we need each other. This race would not be what it is without people sharing stories, connecting over like this very hard challenge that you're doing. Maybe you're bonking. Lauren de Crescenzo, she's in 37th right now. Maybe you're feeling great. Sharing that experience, that is what matters. Ruth Winter is in third. Carolyn Schiff is bringing up fourth spot. So big changes going on at the front of affairs. Ellen Campbell is in fifth. She's still with her uh, teammate Sturmy in six, and they're chasing together. They have like a minute and a half to close. It's hard to think, like, would I be where I am today without Sarah? And the answer is no. But that doesn't mean I can't be her competitor as well. This race is so hard that you want to work together. You really need friends out there. There's another update, Paige Onweller out with a broken derailleur. Yeah, so the winner of uh, Big Sugar uh, last year in Lifetime Grand Prix, she's now out. I mean, oh, she moved here for a month to prep for this race. So yeah, I mean the mud, that mud, that mud bog, like in five miles of mud, yeah. Reporting out from the race has suffered a broken derailleur out there. Anything can change so quickly in a 12-hour race. We've got two leaders right now, Sofia Gomez Villafane. She's got the company of the German rider, Caroline Schiff. Two chasers, Ruth Winder and Alexis Scarda. You go through a lot of phases, battling with yourself, battling with other people, phases of doubt. Oh, and it looks like the leader of this pack missed the turn. That is Alexis Scarda weakness, strength, like you kind of hit everything. And you kind of have to remember that and just stick with it. All of a sudden you're in a hole and you have to burn some serious matches to get back to where you were. Luckily, she's coming up on the mile 79 aid station. Hopefully that will give her a moment to reestablish herself. Coming out of the mile 79 Eureka checkpoint, Sophia and Caroline are still together, as are Ruth and Alexis. I love that Alexis Scarda is with Ruth, and those two could do some damage to close some gaps. A little over 12 minutes down, Haley Smith and Sarah Sturm. Never ever count out Haley Smith and Sarah Sturm. Still roughly 100 miles to go. A lot, a lot can happen out there. This gets technical right in here. I mean, there are creek crossings, really rocky, and we have some change-ups. So lots of action going down as we start to get into the final third of our event here today. Mile 124, Caroline Schiff out in front, and she has about a seven minute gap to Alexis Scarda and Sofia Gomez Vigifane. Yeah, Scarta making a big jump to get across that gap. She had been with Ruth Winder. So somewhere out there, Ruth Winder had a problem. I think once you are pushing yourself that far mentally and physically, you need every little ounce of strength. So now the fatigue is starting to set in. You're starting to reach down and say, okay, what do I really have? Yeah, it starts to become very much of a mental game at that point, right? We've been on the bike for six plus hours and you know, man, I've got probably four and a half to five hours yet to go. If you're like at all distracted or not in the right place, I think it's just hard to stay focused. I'm starting to see the looks on the face of a little bit of pain, a little bit of stress, a little bit of fatigue from a long day in the saddle. It can happen to anyone and just some days you just don't have it. 
We have some word from out on course that Alexis Scarta is slowing down and has dropped off of Sophia's wheel. Now it's really starting to happen. Once you make that decision in your mind that you're done and you're feeling a certain way, it's just hard to come back from that. Alexis Scarta, who was off to a great start today, has kind of fallen out of view here in the big picture. Word on the street out by Opie. That is mile 182 on the course. The rain is starting to come down. Y'all want epic conditions? Well, we're gonna bring it. So our women's leader, currently Caroline Schiff, is proving to be a phenom out here on the course. That last time split, well over 20 minutes back to Gomez via Fagne in second place. That battle for third place, Sarah Sturm. And Danny shows me she's another rider not really on our radar coming into this weekend. I think from Sea Otto, everyone will be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. But I think this one, I will know what I'm doing. <laughs> the British rider, 28 years old. She's got a decent pedigree as a road racer, but not so sure what her gravel experience is. I really want to do well here, like really, really want to do well. I'm just hoping that I can show what my legs can actually do. They are getting some of the worst conditions we have seen so far. It's not going to get any easier for them. I think this one's more about in your head, to be honest with you. It's in my genes, like my family are pretty mad. My dad was a professional athlete. He always stood out when it mentally got hard and when the days were long. Like, everyone's going to be suffering, right? But it's just, like, how you push through. But I'll tell you what, she's quickly coming to the top of her class here with her skills. We haven't talked about her all day long, and now all of a sudden she's in the picture for a podium position. Everyone loves success, right? I want to get a result in one of these events for sure. She's still in a battle. She's got Sarah Stern fighting it out what's so unique about the Grand Prix. I think the length and the intensity of the pressure, all of us are having to learn something. That looks like the headlight of our lead moto down on the hall straight. And that can only mean one thing, Emporia, your women's winner, Carolyn Schiff. Career standpoint is massive for me. Like I currently work full time still. Trying to get out to each event is a challenge. Emporia, get ready to welcome home Sophia, our last year's champion. She's going to come home in second place. But that's why I want to try and get a result, and just so I can follow my dream and, and try and give it a proper shot where I don't have to get up at 5 a.m. and train before work. Sarah Sturm and Danny Shrewsby pass through the Highland Hill timing points got one podium spot up for grab. I know I'm good, but I know I can be 10 times better if I get the opportunity, so that's what I'm super desperate for. Sarah Sturm, number 34. Danny Shrewsby, number 31. Both of those riders would absolutely love to get a podium spot. Sturmy! crosses that finish line, the fan favorite for a third place. What an unbelievable battle. Sturm just got the better of Shrewsby, so Sturm will be on the podium here today. What a great ride. Danny Shrewsby, fourth place, and what an epic battle. What did you think? Savage, absolutely savage. Um, I suppose that's when the, the mental side comes in and just don't give up. What does it mean to you to notch up this huge result on the biggest stage in gravel? I'm stoked. I think um, it's quite nice being the underdog. Obviously, there's quite a few big names here, but I know what I can do, so it was quite nice just to get out there and show it, really. 
What's next for you? I need to figure out maybe staying in the US because the, the travel's cracking me a little bit, but <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I'll figure it out after this. I'm kind of taking each one as it comes and winging it if you like. Yeah, congratulations, Danny. Sophia, tell us about it out there. It looked absolutely epic. Yeah, uh, epic might not even be the right word. It was actually kind of miserable. Um, you know, nice start and then complete chaos and chaos. And I just can't believe people do this, like sign up for this for fun. Like this is my job and, you know, I just stayed with what I could. And um, yeah, big shout out to the two guys that definitely got me to the finish. And Sarah, I'm so proud of oh you. Oh my God. <laughs> With a breakout ride, she notched up a third place in the Lifetime Grand Prix standings for Unbound. This is Danny Shrosby. Please give it up for your Lifetime Grand Prix Women's Podium. Good job out there, ladies. I didn't think that was gonna happen to me. We were falling, I mean, it was just a mess. It was more like surviving that section. And then pretty much had a day ending mechanical, my derailleur snapped. I just wanted to crawl into a hole and disappear into the world. This lifestyle is, it's difficult and we give up a ton in order to race at this level and it can look really fun and enticing from the outside, but when you have a day like I had out there, um, it's really hard. If you put that much energy and heart into something and it's taken away from you, um, it's just, you, you need time to heal that. And this is something that will probably stay with me for a little while and it's gonna take some time. Um, and I think that'll be a good time for me to revisit the priorities and get back on track. Up next, they are looking at Crusher and the Tusher, followed by the infamous Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike. Crusher is where Sophia's season took a turn last year, while the rest of the field is looking for the chance to challenge that top step on the podium. The whole field has some major climbing ahead of them.